Welcome to the Every Nation Dorado Church. We are so happy that you could join us today. Let's take a look at some of the announcements for the upcoming weeks. Every start of the year, we as an Every Nation family globally take time to pray, fast and seek the face of the Lord. For 2021, our theme is Awesome God. Please make sure to diarize January the 10th to January the 30th for our 21-day prayer and fasting. We will definitely be sharing more information with you closer to the time on the topics that we will be praying for and the time and days that we will be praying corporately as a church. We look forward to praying and fasting with you in 2021. And just a reminder, our Monday corporate prayer closed on the 14th of December. We will resume again on the 11th of January in 2021. And due to the public gathering restrictions, we will now have all our services on YouTube and will no longer meet face to face for the remainder of the year. For our Sunday services on the 20th of December, the 27th of December, and the 3rd of January, you can find our services on YouTube at 9 a.m. And join us for our Christmas carol service on the 24th of December from 7 to 8 p.m. Please note that this service will only be on YouTube and not on Facebook as previously communicated. So invite your friends and your family over as you join us as we sing Christmas carols and listen to a special message by Pastor Christopher. And to find out more about who we are as a church or to find the latest sermons, you can visit our website at www.envintook.org. Hello everybody and welcome once again to our online channel. It's always a pleasure to be able to meet in this way, despite the fact that uh, it's, it's warmer, it's more amazing when we're in person. But as we understand, we're currently under restrictions and we have this opportunity to continue to minister the Word of God, even though it's through this channel. And we believe that God is still able to touch your life and uh, the Word of God is still able to transform you even in this way. So I want to bring you season's greetings. We're now coming into the Christmas time. I hope that you've made all the plans with your family and that it's going to be an awesome time uh, together with them. Uh, we've heard from the authorities concerning the COVID-19 numbers as well as the various uh, principles and restrictions that have been uh, issued. And uh, we are definitely in the space where we want to collaborate with government to see uh, that those numbers are coming down. But our message throughout this time and this year has been that we will have no fear, that we will not entertain fear in our hearts or in our families, but that we'll understand that the Word of God is medicine unto us, that we are able to trust God for that protection against any kind of pestilence and virus. And for those of you who have been affected by that, that you'll continue in the Word of God and in prayer to see healing and recovery in that situation as well. So. Uh, today we're going to continue with a series that we've started last week called Gifts from Jesus. And uh, it's, it's an important time, Christmas, you know, most of the time it's really sort of drowned out by uh, Santa Claus and the gifts and, and the Christmas carols. But it's important that we understand the coming of Christ and how it impacts not just our families, but also our cities and our nations and the world at large. So I'm going to get into the word right now, but before that, let's just pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that your word is living and active and that it is powerful, Lord God, in our times to transform our lives and bring us in alignment with your purpose. And Father, we pray, God, that even as we are sharing the word this morning, that you'll speak to people in their hearts, Lord, that each one of us, Lord, will hear your voice this morning and that will be encouraged this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So last week, uh, Philip spoke about the peace of God as a, a, one of the gifts of Jesus. And he emphasized the fact that this peace of God is something that is beyond our circumstances. And in the times that we are in right now, it is a grace that many people, if they don't see the, the benefit of that, always get to replace the peace of God with some other kind of uh, uh counterfeit. And I want to encourage you to go back 
and get that message and share it with friends and family. Very important and fundamental message that he shared. And today we're going to speak about the next gift from Jesus. There are so many, but we just wanted to highlight these two. And this is a whole new world. Jesus Christ and his entrance into creation through the birth of the Virgin Mary actually begins to introduce a whole new world. There's so much talk about a great reset around the world. And the reset had taken place actually 2,000 years ago when Jesus was born in Bethlehem. And he came to then introduce a new kind of obedience, a new kind of Adam, a new creation, and a new Lord of Lords. And uh, we are going to go into the scriptures right now to deal with these various aspects of the gift, which is Jesus. There's a song um, that's, that's along the lines of a whole new world, and it speaks about this amazing experience. And this is exactly what Jesus has brought to us. The first thing about a whole new world that Jesus has brought in through his birth is this, a new kind of obedience, a new kind of obedience. We understand through the scriptures that God is Lord and King and he is to be obeyed. But when Jesus entered in, something really changed as to in the past, how we used to worship and serve God. We now have finally found someone who is perfect and fulfills the requirements that God desires. And so in Romans chapter five, verse 18 to 19, the writer of Romans begins to address this. He says, consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people, so also one righteous act resulted in justification and life for all people. For just as through the obedience of the one man, the many, through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made righteous. And the world was thrown into sin and corruption and death because of the disobedience of this one man, and his name is Adam. And through the deception of Satan, through the woman, eventually he uh, disobeys God and curses the whole human race. And today many people are asking, if God created this world and God exists, why is the world in a mess? Why is there so much evil and so much pain? Even in the time of, of, of Christmas, why is there sicknesses and disease? The reason why is because of the disobedience of man. The disobedience of Adam brought in condemnation and death. And this is what Christ then came to reverse. And the Bible refers to him as the second Adam. We'll touch on that just now. But this is the crucial part. Most people believe that their obedience is what qualifies them before God. And their disobedience is what disqualifies them before God. But the important obedience is not the obedience of your and mine, but it's the obedience of Jesus Christ. He is the one that was born perfectly. He is the one that lived perfectly. He is the one that sacrificed his life. He is the one that we preach as the one to whom everyone must look and identify themselves with so that the, the obedience and the righteousness of Jesus Christ could be imputed to us. The Bible says there is not even one person who is able to say that they are righteous or good or holy. Not even one. Not Muhammad, not the Dalai Lama, not Buddha. Nobody Nobody has lived a sinless life. No one has escaped the corruption with, which came through the seed of Abraham. And some people say, no, but I'm a good person. The issue is not that you're a good person in your behavior. The problem is that you are offspring. You are, you are born of the first Adam. And the sin nature is inside of you. Every person who has a, a, a human father has the nature of Adam, the first Adam, and has the sin nature coursing through their body. And what happened with Jesus, this is the power of the virgin birth. Jesus was not born from the seed of a man. 
And God did this deliberately in order to circumvent the corruption that was in the seed, in the sperm, in the offspring, in the DNA of Adam that went through all the way to, through mankind that carried the sin nature. Jesus was able to circumvent that and he was then conceived through the power of the Holy Spirit because of the word of God. And, and the Bible says that the word of God was made flesh and dwells among dwelt among us and this was the the manifestation the incarnation of god into flesh and his obedience to the father his life his sacrifice on the cross is what then comes to reverse and makes possible a whole new world i'm telling you if it wasn't for jesus all of us would be on our way to hell getting the due payment for all of our disobedience, whether in action or whether in our nature. But Jesus, this one man, through his obedience, the Bible says many would be made righteous by faith in Jesus Christ. So this is the first part of the gift of the whole new world that Jesus introduces. It's a new obedience, and that is the obedience of Jesus. So therefore, in order for you to please God, you must have faith in Christ. By faith, your faith is imputed to you as righteousness, is credited to you as righteousness. That faith being in Jesus Christ because of the life that he lived and the death that he died and the resurrection that he brought about. The second part is that Jesus brings in a new Adam. This is literally almost like Jesus is bringing in a new kind of human being. This is amazing. Even from a biological point of view, the Christian, the believer, is a different kind of human being especially in his spirit. You understand that mankind is not just a body. He is made up of a body. He is a spirit. He has a soul, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And he, he lives, he dwells in a body. And the man who is not born again, who doesn't have relationship with God, is spiritually dead because of the separation that he has with life. And Jesus then comes in and he introduces a new Adam. Let's read here from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Uh, through, through verse 42, uh, the Apostle Paul speaking about the resurrection. And then it says in verse 42, he says, So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is, sown, what is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. Verse 45, thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. And this is the critical difference between the man who is not born again and the man that is born again. The man that is not born again, he is just a living being. But the man who is born again, the Bible says, Liver, rivers of living water will flow from your belly, speaking about the spirit that will indwell man. It is similar to the second man that says here in verse 45, the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. So if you're born again, you are a life-giving spirit. There is life inside of you. The word of God says that he who has the son has life. He who does not have the son does not have life. That life is in the son. And so it is important that we recognize that when Jesus was being born in a manger, he was bringing through a new kind of race. When he came out of the grave, he came out bringing through immortality, which starts in our spirits. And at that point, mankind could now participate once again in being a life-giving spirit. Hallelujah. This is so important because most of us look at ourselves in the mirror and we don't see anything good. 
We, we, we look at ourselves and we see failure and we see spots and we see wrinkles and we see I'm too black, I'm too yellow, I'm too red, I'm too this, my hair is not this, my hair is not that. And we forget who we are on the inside. And that is what Jesus came to change. In fact, the Bible says that Jesus in his natural self was not even an attractive person. The Bible says there was no beauty that we should have desired him. He was just a normal guy. He might even have been an ugly guy, so to speak. And that doesn't matter because it's not the outside that brings glory. It's the inside. Most people nowadays on the outside, they've got their makeup right. They've got their clothing right. They've got their car right. They've got their haircut right. They've got everything. They weave on. They've got their plaits on. They've got their nails right. They've got their perfumes on. On the outside, everything is smelling good and shiny. But on the inside, the Bible says, like dead man's bones over a whitewashed tomb and most people when they look at Jesus they only see this baby in a manger what could it be but that was the eternal son of God on the inside the spirit of life coming into the earth changing the human race and bringing many sons into glory and that is what you have received in Christ if you have received Jesus you have received eternal life that life is now within you and it has made you a life giving spirit that means wherever you go you are a life giving spirit in every home where you are you you are a life-giving spirit in every company where you work. You are a life-giving spirit in the marriage where you dwell. You are a life-giving spirit in the school where you are. You are a life-giving spirit in the university where you are. You are a life-giving spirit. And that spirit is not your own. It is the life of God that is flowing through you. Hallelujah. This is so awesome. And this is the grace and gift that we've received by, for free. It was a gift that we received. He says, to them that received Jesus, he gave them power. He gave them authority to become sons and daughters of God. Not born of human will, but born of the Spirit of God. And then it says this. This is amazing. It says, verse 46, but it is not the spiritual that is first, but the natural. And then the spiritual, verse 47, the first man was from the earth, a man of dust, speaking of Adam, made from the dust. The second man is from heaven. This is Jesus. He said, I am from above. You guys are from below, talking to the Pharisees. And he said, and it says, the second man, Adam, is from heaven. Now look here, verse 48. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are of the dust. So we carry the weakness of the flesh that came from the man of dust, dust to dust, ashes to ashes, if you've ever, ever been to a funeral. And as it as is the man of heaven, so also are those who are of heaven. What is he saying here? John chapter 4 verse 17 says that so that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, as Jesus is, not as he was, as he is, his glorified self, so are we in this world. It says that we actually bear the similitude of the Son of God. When God is looking at us, he sees his Son, not because he's pretending, but because we are born of the same Spirit. It says in verse 49, just as we have born the image of the man of dust, Adam, just as we, we look like Adam, so shall also, so shall we also bear the image of the man of heaven. This is a wonderful gift that God has redeemed the human race. And most of the time when we're preaching the gospel out there, we're not just trying to bring religion into people's lives, rules of do's and don'ts. We are trying to introduce them into a new kind of life. We are trying to introduce them into a new way of being. This is the gift that we are seeing in the time of Christmas. Baby in a manger is a package of life Meaning that my old life associated with my ancestors and uh, in my lineage there's this and that and we come from a line of that, you know. All of that you can disregard because now you are in Christ. The only people that have a problem with this are those that boast in their, their lineage. No, we are from those very pure race, pure race, uh, pure uh, royal bloodline, those kind of people. So don't, don't hang with us. We, we are elites on the earth. 
And even for those of us who are, that, who are that, we have to despise that in order that we may gain true royalty and true life and identity in Christ. This is awesome. The next one, so the second part is the new Adam that Jesus introduces. The third one is the new creation, very similar, but it goes beyond just the association with Christ. It means that you have actually changed. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, uh, verse 16 and 17, and this relates to all of you. Look here. It says, therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. What is he saying? He says that from now on, now that you're born again, we don't only see you as a normal human being. We don't just see you as you were we now begin to see you as the new creation that you are. And he says, even though we regarded Jesus in the same way, when Jesus was on the earth, they saw just a Jewish man who is just like us, who eats like us, who goes to the bathroom just like us. They couldn't see, many of them couldn't see that he was God in the flesh. They passed him just like this. He spoke to the Pharisees and said, you, you study the scriptures as if in them you will find life. These scriptures testify about me and yet you do not come to me so that you might have life. And it was so easy for them because they, uh, to, to, to miss the Messiah because they only perceived the outside. How many times have you looked at your own life and said, I've, I'm now born again, but all that I see is a mess. All that I see is my struggles. All that I see is the problems. All that I see is the weaknesses. All that I see is I'm not this. I'm not, I'm not good enough like those people. You compare yourself with all sorts of celebrities and friends and all of that. And you do not perceive that inside of you is a new creation. He says in verse 17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, anyone, if anyone is in Christ, if any man, any woman is in Christ, he is a new creation. Not he will be one day when Jesus comes. He is. She is a new creation. And, and, and the Greek rendering there means that never existed before. This is God's masterpiece. If anyone is in Christ, they are a beautiful creature created in Christ. It says, all things have passed away. All things have passed away. Behold, see, perceive, realize this. All things have become new. How many things? All things. How many things are new in your life? All things. All things. And the enemy's plan and plot in your life, most of the time, is to get you not to see this. Because then you will begin to perceive the riches that are in Christ. You will not rejoice because of the riches that you have here on earth. You'll begin to perceive that there's something even greater. There's something even greater. And that glory will begin to flow from the inside all the way to the outside. So this is the third thing, the transformation that comes in the new creation. This is part of the whole new world that Jesus brought. And then the last one is a new Lord, a new Lord. You know, the Bible says that the, the God of this world has blinded the eyes of those who do not believe so that they will not receive the gospel. And so the Bible has this revelation that Satan stole Adam's authority on earth and was ruling on the earth and introduced death and corruption. But when Jesus came, he established a new kingdom, a new throne that began to rule upon the earth. And that rulership starts in our hearts but begins to spread into our close family members. Our friends begin to experience the impact of that kingdom. And some of them like it, some of them don't. But light begins to spread and darkness must flee. And this is what Jesus came to bring. You know, the, 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 the time of Christmas, we usually read the account of the kings coming from the east who were astrologers and they saw the, the star of a new lord, a new king born in Bethlehem. And they said, we came to bring him gold and myrrh and frankincense to pay homage to this king. And King Herod, who was the regent at that time, he said, let me also worship this God. Tell this king, tell me where he is. Realizing that 
understanding that there is a new Lord that was coming into the earth. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be, the government, the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. Just a sidebar here, Jesus is referred to as an Everlasting Father. That's amazing. And that, uh, just to show his union with the Father. The Prince of Peace, which we spoke about last week. And it says, of the increase of his government <laughs> and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with the judgment and with the justice from henceforth forever and forever. And the zeal of the Lord of hosts, the Lord of armies, the passion of the Lord of armies will perform this. And so we understand that earth is under new rulership. And we are associated with this Lord. He is Lord of our lives. He is King of kings. And he comes to rule in our lives. So these are, these are the gifts that we have received in Jesus. The Prince of Peace, the Peace of God. And secondly, a whole new world through the second Adam, a new obedience that is the obedience of Christ that we receive. The new Adam, the new race that he's brought through, the new creation, who you are in Christ, and the new Lord, someone that is in charge in your life, who takes care of us and who leads us. What should be our response to all of this? You know, many times during Christmas, we'll sing about it, We'll go to church or we'll, we'll give gifts and then it will pass. But this time is supposed to, to be a celebration of these gifts that I have peace that passes all understanding, passes all circumstances. I'm established no matter if the mount, it says God is our refuge and strength. Therefore, we will not fear though the earth give way or the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. We have a, an, a, an established peace. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, unshakable, unmovable. This is what we have. And then it's not only something that it's in our hearts. We are a new creation. The same genealogy that Jesus follows, that he's born of the Father. We are now in that bloodline and we are now new creatures in Christ. What are we to do? What should be our response? This is it. Believe. Believe in the gifts of peace in your life and the new creation in your life. Secondly, live out, live it out, live it out. Don't only allow your faith to be something that you deal at home alone. No, it's like being married. You can't be married in secret. Once you're married, it's public. Everybody got to know. Otherwise, there's a problem. In the same way, we are married to Christ. We are now in the royal family. Let's live it out. Let's leave it out. Our association with that baby, we are no longer coming as strangers in, in, into that stable. We are coming as family members. <laughs> we are now family members of baby Jesus. Our little brother was born, or our big brother was born in this time. It might not be the 25th of December, but he was born in this time. And this is what we're selling. It's family. And then share this gift with your neighbors, with your friends. There are many people who don't have peace. They need peace. They need unshakable peace. There are many people who are losing their jobs, losing their marriages, losing their relationship, committing suicide, and you have this life in you. Share it with them. You have this new creation that you can bring them into it. So I, know, I wanna pray for us today as we close. And I want to really pray that God will open our eyes to this reality. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for revelation upon revelation. Right now that our eyes and our hearts will be flooded with light. That we'll understand what is the, the great grace and gift that we've received in the peace of God. And in the new creation, the new world that you have established through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Father, we receive these.
these gifts in this time. We believe upon them. We trust our whole hearts and our whole families upon Christ. And we commit to live it out as we are led by your Holy Spirit. I pray that for those people who are in uncertainty, who are going through a tough time, that Christ will be the fulfillment of their desire in this time. We pray a, a grace and a blessing, Lord God, over each one of them. In Jesus' name, amen. So may, may God bless you in this time through the revelation that you get. You already have it inside of you. Discover what you have already received. Look in the mirror and say, as Jesus is, so am I in this world. I've received the Son of God as a grace in my life. And we will see you soon and continue to subscribe and be on the platforms in this time. You need a word from God. And so we want to encourage you in this time and share it. Please be generous in this time. Please let people say people from every nation gave me gifts and money and things like that. I want to encourage you as you spend time and don't be afraid of COVID, but take precautions, protect yourself, continue in the word of the Lord. Have a wonderful time and we'll see you soon. Thank you for listening. For more information about this podcast and other resources, please visit envintook.org.